So next we have the question. It's asking you on cyclohexane. So it's a cyclic alkane, two hydrogen on each because carbon from four bond, you don't show the hydrogen bonded to the carbon. This is actually C6H12. It is CN H2N, but it's not alkene because it closes up on its own. That's why you, you don't need the two additional hydrogen at the end of a straight chain alkene, all right? So you have reacted the CH there. We don't, we don't show the hydrogen bonded to the carbon in a skeletal formula. I've just drawn it here to show you the, the reaction that has happened there. And same deal there, we don't show the hydrogen bonded to the carbon in the skeletal formula. I've just shown you there to signify that, you know, you can eliminate the HCl. So this is elimination of the HCl and you get the alkene. This is actually a cycloalkene because it's not a stretch chain alkene. It's actually C6H10 because 1 and 2 hydrogen, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This was C6. Well, I already written it down before, so I'm not going to write it down again. That is your free radical substitution. So for reaction one, the con essential condition, you need ultraviolet light. They want the condition of the reagent. You need ultraviolet light to break the Cl2 into chlorine radical. So this is called homolytic fission is part of your introductory organic chemistry they love to ask you to do definition and when they do you cannot blend them you know because it's all stated in the specification you are just asking for trouble if you are not going to learn it okay so there's a h there are two h there this will take out the h and it will form hcl when you take out the h you still have one h there but now you have a chlorine radical there you have a radical forming another radical. This is the idea of propagation. Whereas in termination, you have radical and radical recombine and you will not get any radical. So here is the formation of the product that you want, which is this product, chlorocyclohexane from a propagation step where radical form another radical here is the formation of the product that you want from recombining two radicals such that you don't get any radical form in the product step that is termination all right so name the type of reactions that occurs in reaction two that was just elimination because one reactant goes to one and two product you eliminate you kick out something all right Whereas you only have one thing to begin with, you end up with more, more molecules than what you started with. So this next question, this is hex 3 in is an isomer of cyclohexane. Cyclo that is basically cyclic, so it exists as a ring. And then what you have is hexane, which is an alkane, so that is saturated. Now what do we have? We have hex 3 in. Oops, no, that is not right. So hex is one, two, three, four, five, and six, and hex three in. So my double bond is between three and four. I don't know whether I have the cis or the trans. I don't think it matters because what I'm gonna do is I will now have prop or propanoic acid, which is three carbon, carboxylic acid, one, two, and three. And this seems to be the only product there. And you know that from alkene to carboxylic acid, you have to cleave this is called the oxidative, well it is oxidation reaction, but the idea is that this is not a mild oxidation, it's an extreme oxidation, so you get the key, uh, you gotta do oxidative cleavage or oxidative rupture of the carbon-carbon double bond, and you can watch more of these in my AS topical playlist under hydrocarbons as part of alkene and alkene chemistry. So we know that this side here, this is what you call a RCH double bond. This is your R group and alkyl group. There is one hydrogen there, carbon from four bond, one, two, three. There is one more hydrogen there, double bond there. And you will see this is symmetrical. This on the other side is also RCH double bond. This and that, they are symmetrical molecule. So they are exactly the same. That means both of them will give you only the same carboxylic acid. So RCH double bond will get oxidized to give you carboxylic acid there. 
and your reagents your reagents must be a very strong uh, oxidizing agent this is called acidified KMnO4 what I usually like to write is acidified as H plus instead of KMnO4 I just write the MnO4 minus because this is the active ingredient in this oxidizing agent and I have to heat it up hot and concentrated MnO4 minus Essentially, you need to heat it up, okay? You don't keep it cold. If it is cold and dilute, you will just form diol, where this become OH, and OH, you will get hexan 3 4 diol if you do it under cold dilute KMnO4. So if I do this cold dilute, acidified MnO4 minus, this is going to give me that and that, and there will be 3 and 4. This will give me hexan uh, 3 for diol okay so hexan 3 for the i think it's without the e there hexan 3 for diol uh, that would be under mild oxidation this is under extreme oxidation both of them they are called oxidation as well it's just that one is under milder condition if you want to rupture the carbon carbon double bond you have to use hot concentrated kmno4 hot concentrated but be careful you need the acid Without the acid, you will not be able to oxidize this. Uh, you will not be able to act as an oxidizing agent. If you decide to use the wood, be very careful. You need the complete uh, wood, acidified. Uh, don't think the potassium is necessary, but you gotta have the oxidation number of the manganate. This is still wrong. You gotta have the manganate seven. And this is the reason why I don't like to write down the name because I know the moment you make a mistake there, that's when you will lose the marks. Of course, you know, question myself, state the name of the reagent you need. State the name of the reagent. There has to be acidified manganese 7 with the Roman numeral, specifying the oxidation number of the manganese here. And that's the end of that 9 mark question there.